Hello everyone, welcome back to another episode of our slash tales from tech support. In today's episode. Old ways versus. Best ways. Doc surrounds himself with idiots, blames software support. Before we get started make sure to subscribe so you will never miss a video. So let's get started. Old ways versus. Best ways. So. My job ranged from helping old folks buy some home PC setup for Skyping their grandkids, to helping a boss buy maybe one server set and 20 machines. Not only would I listen to their needs, budgets, wants and then help choose their products, but sometimes I'd be sent to install the systems bought. To be clear, I was hardware and OS install only, maybe a third-party software on special request. The idea was that as soon as the customer is logged in and online, the rest is up to them with a good luck and thanks for your purchase, here's my card if you need something else. One day, I get a big score. A boss walked in and started evaluating the stuff we had on the shelf, you know, the cheap plastic of home PC garbage the chain wants to buy low and sell high en masse. This is pretty normal but this guy is using a clipboard, pen, paper, and one of the oldest calculators I'd ever seen, a Casio Scientific with yellowed buttons and screen about the same size as a post-it note. I love those things. Anyway, we get talking and I ask about the clipboard. He says he needs 12 PCs, one for him, one for a secretary, four for some artists, four for some draftsmen, technical drawing for designing anything from serial toys to car gear boxes, and the rest for accounts and HR. I said no problem and went towards the big ticket items like Macs for the artists. After a while, he'd filled in about five sheets of A4 before asking, can I get these customized? Yes, but that's probably going to take some more time to explain, more in depth. Oh that's no problem, how about you come to my office on Thursday 2pm and we can get to the brass of the situation. After checking with my manager, I'm highly encouraged to go and make an afternoon of it, there were plenty of others on the floor to cover me. Thursday rolled around and I get to the address, I stare in confusion. It's a building site and the concrete hadn't even been poured yet. I back up and park nearby to check my phone to make sure I have the address correct, it is, but I decide to ring the boss. After a few seconds he waves me over from the porta cabin. Wiping my now muddy office shoes as I get in, I ask what's going on, and the boss reveals that we're basically in his living room, but it's not built yet. Next door will be the office, three floors, and that it's going to be an architect company with his house as the flagship design. Where I live, it's not unheard of. A lot of businesses here in the UK behave like farmsteads or small holdings, even if it's a specialty ice cream cafe or plumber's supply warehouse or maybe a kitchen-slash-bathroom showroom, the business owner is almost always living in line of sight and in close proximity of the business. Okay, I nod in slow but sure understanding. He walks me over to the old-fashioned way of doing things. Lots of big office boxes, draftsman's table, actual blueprints and mechanical pencils and pens, numerous highlighters and other stationery. He even has a fax machine set up. It was like walking into a living museum, and I couldn't be happier. He points to a garage on the drawings, and then to the room next door. I want a server in there. He then traces a finger from there to the building next door, not his house, but the business. Then wires go through a pipe underground to receptionist, he points at an expansive lobby area, then up the walls and branches off to the different department. Mind if I take photos for notes? I trust you. Later on, I get back to my place of work and sit at my desk. I look at the jumble of towers and devices that had piled up for me to fix or upgrade while I was out. I do them the day after, it was already dark outside, and I planned on getting home after reporting to my manager. Basically, I was being asked to do something I'd never done before but I had a plan. Manager comes over and asks how I got on. Can you put me through PAT testing and installation stuff again? Like, yesterday? Why? I thought you had that already? I might need a refresher. He wants me to install cables and power and phone cables. That's easy though, you do it every day. 
No, not like that. Like this. I point to the big plastic cable conduits on the workplace wall. But. That's contractor stuff. You don't do that, we don't provide that kind of thing, we're not builders. I'm sorry, you'll have to decline this one, we're not covered for it. The next morning, I pick up the phone and give the guy the bad news. He wouldn't take no for an answer though. When do you finish work? 7 p.m. every day, 5 on Sundays. Why? I see. What if you come to work for me at about 8? One day a week. Fast forward to the following Monday. I'm stood there in the mud, with wellies borrowed from boss for the evening, holding up my phone and him holding up the blueprint, pointing and wandering around the foundations. I think you'll need Cat 5, maybe fiber optic if you're okay with the budget, running through there, and maybe up through that wall and ceiling there, power too, but I'm not an electrician. Don't worry about that, just tell me what I need. Fast forward again another week and the skeleton of the building was already up, conduits set inside concrete with the proper shielding and some cables already tied in. He wanted to do things a bit differently, you see, most buildings in the UK have IT infrastructure built as an afterthought, conduits and cables trailing around in untidy fashion. He wanted this building to come alive, everything out of sight, but highly functional and adaptable. The conduits were big enough so that the cables could be pulled out and rethreaded if necessary without ripping them out of the walls again, while ensuring that workstations worked like hospital beds, able to move and reinstall at whim. Little did I know what else he was going to do. Alongside the IT, he has filing cabinets built into the wall, and this was a good thing because, a year later, an entire section of the county has a power cut for three days. I was still working for the boss as a part-time IT professional. The business was small enough that I could remote into a workstation or server for anything small and local enough to just pop in, at night or early morning, for the more crucial stuff. On the day of the power cut, I got in as early as I could and checked the UPS units on each floor and let myself into the house, I was trusted with a key. Making sure Doggo was okay with me being there first, I checked the server and compared the electricity supply news updates. Erring against caution, I decided to ensure backups were saved and shut everything down to complete blackouts safely, taking the strain off the UPS. For three days, I kept offering apologies to the boss, businessmen don't like it when their computers go down. Nevertheless, he was calm and kept waving me away. On the fourth day, the building suddenly hummed back to life and I felt better. After checking the network and individual machines were working properly again, I went back to boss and let him know. Finally, I agreed him why he was so calm. He showed me the filing cabinets hidden in the wall paneling in his office, then took me to the accountant's office where the same had been installed. The accountant even had a mechanical calculator, the kind with a massive crank handle and rolls of paper. The draftsmen had their tables and stationery set up next to their computer desks. I was highly impressed and wondered why more businesses don't operate like this. A bit of a sad ending though. The boss made his money and everyone was laid off with more than generous packages, he moved out to somewhere near Florence and the building was turned into some kind of yoga and ballet center. I wonder if they know they have a top-notch network in the walls. Oh well. Doc surrounds himself with idiots, blames software support. Got a rant on this one. So my last call of the day today was a doctor at an office we sold three systems to a couple months back, and he immediately starts laying into me. DR Kevin, obligatory not his name. It's been nothing but problems since we purchased this system, you guys fix it, and it breaks a day later. We spent thousands of dollar on a system that doesn't work. We're losing thousands of dollar cause we can't take x-rays. Etc. Then he tells me to call the office back in 5 minutes to talk to his assistant. Awesome, dude literally just wanted to complain. So I call the office immediately cause otherwise I'd risk getting another call and not be able to call out at all and after explaining that to the bitchy receptionist who said doc told you to call back in 5 minutes she put me on hold. 
While waiting I perused the notes for all three offices. Not even joking, 100% of the calls we've logged that were actual issues are user-related and or network-related. As software we support, we don't manage anything with network. We ping, flushes, and tell users to enter their network creds. That's about the extent of what we're allowed to do because, well, software support. Period. Examples of the calls? Client workstation won't connect to the database. Server is 192.168.1.x and client is 10.1.10.x, entirely different networks. But you guys fixed it just the other day. Note from that day reads my colleague chose the correct office Wi-Fi and you entered the password. It is the right Wi-Fi. Then I don't know what to tell you. Call your IT. IT called us because the office is saying they can't take x-rays, admits that they've been in process of overhauling their network. Through discussion, it's determined they can't connect to the device because they removed the router that enables the device to connect, didn't think it served any purpose. Ignorance is bliss. Can't blame M too much for not knowing, but I truly don't understand the umpteen calls we got after we clearly explained the purpose of the router, all related to the router not being present. Last Thursday, office calls cause they can't take x-rays. Tech has caller reboot the panel. After three reboots with no change, it's discovered caller is rebooting the wrong thing. She pushes the right button and they're back in business. Which leads me to my call today. Same chick from last Thursday, and not surprisingly, exact same reason for calling. Device isn't powered on. She admits it was exactly what she went through on Thursday. Then asks, could it be my iWatch? Cause they didn't have any problems before I started filling in here, I normally work at the other office. No Karen, your iWatch has nothing to do with the power button. So she powers it on, and it immediately powers itself back off after displaying a low battery. Okay, switch the batteries, Karen. Then all is good. Then Karen asks, I took x-rays today can you get them back? Of note, this particular IR does have internal storage, but, no Karen, the device was off when you took the images. There's literally nothing can be done about that. And then she asks, so how can we prevent this issue? I can't even. Oh yeah, you bet your ass I told my boss to let sales know to deny any and every demand for refunds or discounts cause the way the doc was talking, I feel it coming. 